Hey, it's Pete from the Family IT Guy. Today I've got a video about a new PC I bought to upgrade some of my other PCs. As you can see, it's a small form factor case and inside is uh, a Core i3 uh, processor with 4GB of RAM and the whole machine only cost me uh, £55 delivered to my door. So what I've got in mind for this PC is to put my um, RetroPie gaming PC, which I'm showing you on screen here, into that case. This will mean my uh, gaming PC will uh, occupy much less space behind my TV. And to get to use the other components for another project I've got in mind. What I do need to put in this small form factor case though is a graphics card so that mainly I can connect it through to my TV. The uh, standard DVI connectors are not going to be suitable for that. I've realised that um, the uh, front power switch and LEDs comes in a sort of single block here and at the very least I'm uh, going to have to uh, jury rig some sort of uh, additional power supply button. Um, I do have some power supply uh, switches, or power switches, and I've uh, used my glue gun and uh, tried to make something to make it the same depth as the existing uh, um, switch there. So uh, I'll carry on and see if I can make this work. So that's the motherboard out over there, and this one's had all the connectors removed. So uh, let's get the back plate o switched over and then uh, get this one in, and then see if I can get that uh, alternate power supply uh, power switch working. So I've got the motherboard into the case. Uh, before I go any further, I'm just going to switch the thing on and see if it works. Using my little power supply button. Well, the power supply button works. Do we get anything from the screen? Yes, we do. Okay, so I think I need to get the... Uh, um, graphics card in there. Uh, the noisy fan before was because the BIOS had reset so uh, I've just uh, adjusted the fan profile so it runs much quieter. Um, what I've decided to do for the case is actually mount it uh, behind the TV sort of standing up because um, there is an air intake on the bottom of this case there which you can just see but that gets blocked if you stand it on its side, so I've, I've made myself a couple of little uh, stands and I'm going to put the case on those, like that, and we should get nice air, or heat, hot air, going out of the top of the case. So uh, other components that you need then are my uh, wireless adapter, uh, my Xbox 360 wireless adapter, and for this time I'm uh, uh, I'm going to use uh, a, an Ubuntu installation called Lacquer, which uh, runs RetroArch sort of out of the box. Um, and that runs quite a bit quicker, I think, than my previous attempt of uh, running at Ubuntu and uh, running RetroPie. So I'll get that all set up and then we'll just have a quick look and see how it performs. OK, so here we are in my living room. And you can see the uh, PC tucks in very nicely behind my TV, it's a lot smaller. And uh, I'll just switch it on. So with Lacquer as the operating system, the machine boots up and gets running quite a bit quicker than the uh, um, RetroPie installation. So <clears throat> there are a couple of settings that you need to look at on Lacquer uh, to sort of get the best out of it. Um, one of which is to enable the Wi-Fi and uh, the other is to enable uh, Samba logging so that you can get to uh, put your ROMs and things onto Lacquer um, using another PC. So that's how quick it is to boot up on a really old uh, two and a half inch uh, hard drive. So quite a bit of an improvement. So let me just get the controller now and just show you on the... Uh, settings menu there you can connect yourself to Wi-Fi and if you look at the services as I said you want to enable Samba to make sure that you uh, can get to the hard drive on this machine from another PC 
So when you've put your ROMs onto the machine, you need to tell RetroArch to check the machine and find the files and register them so you can play them using this submenu. And as you can see here, here are all of the master system ROMs that we own, that we've uh, put on. And yes, you can download the art as well for them. Uh, there's just a single pack that you download that's available from one of those settings menus. So here's a, a bit of gameplay uh, using the machine. And the first title is a master system one called Ghost House. Um, I was quite surprised at looking at the graphics of this game, even though it's low resolution. Um, it just looks really good to me. Um, I'm not very good at the game at all, and I'm playing uh, like a granny, but um, there's no glitches in performance. Everything works fine. The sound is fine. Um, yeah, it's just really good, and uh, my son quite enjoys this game. Uh, bit of a challenge. I think it used to be an arcade game as well. So let's move on and take a look at uh, a Mega Drive game. I'm sure many of you will be uh, familiar with this uh, Streets of Rage game. I've edited down some of the sequences and startup sequences for these just to remove the delays of a few seconds to make the video run a bit more quickly. Um, but let's go. Let's play as Blaze. Again, the graphics look good, uh, the sound works fine, there's no delays, uh, pauses or glitches or anything like that. And I haven't had to change any settings at all on uh, Lacquer in order to run these games. I've just put the ROMs in and they uh, work fine. So let's uh, look at a PlayStation game. Uh, this is one of our sort of family favourites and uh, never got great reviews. Um, but I, I, I have a soft spot for it because it features uh, one of my favourite actors from my youth, which is uh, Rick Mayle, who's unfortunately no longer with us anymore. But um, yes, it's a good little sort of strategy game, um, a bit like um, the Worms games, but it's in 3D. So yes, there's uh, little videos to show you set the scene for the game and then... You can get in and pick your sides and um, there's training missions. I think that's what I'll just show you now, briefly. Again, the gameplay uh, on PlayStation games. I haven't tweaked any settings or anything like that and it all seems to work fine out of the box um, which is quite impressive. I think the one thing I have noticed is that uh, old two and a half inch drive is possibly uh, a bit slow and it does suggest that uh, it's a slightly slow read of the CD but uh, in terms of gameplay itself it doesn't doesn't seem to matter but perhaps I'll upgrade that at some point in the future but yes as you can see it works fine so all things considered I'm pretty impressed with lacquer um, and I think it's an improvement for me over the uh, retro pie running on an Ubuntu installation it certainly starts up quicker and there are plenty of options for tweaking the settings on the, uh, the various cores as they call them well, anyway, I hope you found that interesting. I'll provide a full set of links in the description of the video and I'll hope to catch you again in the next one.